They said it could never be done. They called me a fool. They even said I was mad to try and recreate life of a delicious chocolate bear. All from the remnants of inferior chocolate brands. But who's laughing now after my incredible creation? <laughs> It's Halloween! No, I've not gone as a mad scientist. This is more of a weekend hobby. Instead, I've gone as something much, much scarier. Yes, this is exactly what I went as for Halloween. Um, here are some photos as evidence if I have them. Um, anyway, um, as it's Halloween, I feel like it's long past time that we get something out of the way. Finally, after almost an entire year, we have Castle Party, a game that is all about trying to throw the greatest and bestest party in a castle filled with ghouls, ghosts, and various other types of spooks. Ugh. Last person to have died goes first. Castle Party is a roll and write, except, well, uh, there aren't really any dice, um, so it's more of like a, a flip and write, it, except that's also not quite right. Let me just check the instructions here. Uh, these are all in French. The idea here is that you and your friends are building shapes made out of party guests, and then you look down at your board and despair. You each have a hand of party guests and creatures. I mean, like, look how cute this little Frankenstein is. He's adorable. And then, basically, uh, on your go, you will each turn, you flip over a shape, and then begin to build that with your hand of ghouls. Once the shape has been collectively built, you then just simply look down to your board and build that shape. Isn't that sweet? Your board will progressively begin to build up as your party builds and builds. Shoulders begin to jostle. People begin to listen to the thumping of the music. But oh no, space begins to tighten and oh, it doesn't look like there's really enough space in this party for this group. Some people are gonna have to drown. You have to build each shape exactly as they come, exactly according to each orientation that it's presented in. Sure, this delicious L block might look great for your particular square dance, but to your friend, that's no L block. That's a rotated L block. This means the longer the game goes on, the more likely you are to be for things to not quite add up. You know, for things to not quite fit together. All that time artfully tessellating shapes only for ooh, everything to kind of spill out of control and into the street. It's fine, there's, there's plenty of place outside beyond the walls. Until even that begins to fill up and oh no, it looks like you're gonna have to start drowning everyone. People drowning is bad party etiquette and more importantly, leads to negative points. But this seems simple, right? You're just trying to get all your people together and slot them into this party. Except it's not quite that easy, because you're also trying to create big groups of specific types of people. The bigger the group, the bigger the good. You're trying to get a big group of vampires, a big old pile of bones with your skeletons. And don't even get me started on the ghosts, because they like to boo -gee. So when you're going around and building this shape, what starts out as a delicious chunk of witches ends up possibly being ruined by everyone else as suddenly it's filled with a skeleton and a random Frankenstein. So you're looking at this square and trying to work out, well, do you use it for witches or do you try and work out a better place for this bizarre menagerie of other creatures? This is a fun puzzle. It is a game of constantly trying to make the shape work best for you. 
but everyone is doing that at the same time, looking on in despair as the direction the shape is going in terms of who is being placed into this zigzag of despair just spirals out of control and gets wildly away from what anyone really wanted. There's a hilarious moment where eventually, I don't know, you're watching as the shape is building. It just doesn't add up to really anything you want of use. So you decide to go full burn mode and just throw in something to really try and ruin it for everyone. Throw the entire shape out of whack. Like, I don't know, just inserting a random unicorn. <laughs> and yes, this kind of feels a little basic. But as you go through this deck of shapes, you might just flip over a ticking clock, declaring the first of your three hours of party ticking by. And with that also comes an incredible event to transpire. This could be fireworks where you score points for each party goer by the windows, a conga line where you get points for your biggest connected group of people, or a visit from the Pumpkin King. Oh my god, it's the Pumpkin King! The Pumpkin King gets you points for each unique shape or guest that is basically surrounding the eight squares around it. These are quite fun because they score when they happen, not at the end of the game like everything else. So you're trying to build up these big groups for that end game scoring while simultaneously trying to, you know, build for something for when these events eventually trigger during the second, third and fourth quarter of the game. All of these shapes trying to make your kings and queens actually worthwhile and relevant to a certain group trying to leave that one special space for the Pumpkin King's inevitable arrival. It all slots together like so many shapes to perform quite a fun little puzzle. The thing is, squares are, well, a little basic, quite simple, a bit, well, basic. Slotting things together in a perfect square is probably quite easy. Surely no one's going to actually drown when I'm living in a simple castle of four easy walls. Well, get ready, because on the other side of the board, you've got the rave party. This is the big boy version of the game, or more specifically, the version of the game you should play immediately unless you're an actual child. The shape of the castle now has corners, and if that doesn't spice up your life enough, well, there's all these other bits and pieces scattered about. A punch bowl filled with blood, hors d'oeuvres, and they score you points for every surrounding vampire or ghost, respectively. Not only do these provide a little bit of direction of where you want to place your people because, you know, each ghoul and creature has its own preference, but it also provides a number of tight corridors and odd shapes for you to try and fill. This isn't a polite game of Tetris where you try and fill up the perfect square with some deliciously nice shapes. No, this is a nightmare of a dance-off in a castle where a zigzag at the wrong angle is the only thing standing between you having a good time and embarrassing yourself in front of the Pumpkin King. Or, you know, slowly drowning a lot of people. Hey, my eyes are up here. Castle Party is a fun game. It is filled with cute art and cute ideas, all wrapped together by a devilishly gripping puzzle of drawing various shapes, interlocking them together on a steadily developing board. It's quick, it's easy, it's fancy free, and it is sometimes frenetic and chaotic, and other times, like, thought-provoking and strategic. 
In four players, you have a lot less control over uh, where monsters are going within a shape, as well as just generally the orientation of that shape, because you're just not choosing the orientation of shapes quite as frequently. So this means that surely every single time you get a choice, every single choice you take is crucial to making sure you get it perfectly right. Making no mistakes, making that optimum choice every single time. Just kidding, your brain will turn into mush and dribble out of your nose and all across the dance floor. You begin to operate on a much more vibes-based system because there's just too much chaos going on for you to really make those tactical decisions and rapidly hope that your tactical drownings begin to pay off and work out in the end. On lower player counts, that tactical thinking comes out more. You have the opportunity to possibly play two monsters per shape, which means you have a lot more control over what goes on into the shape, what goes where. It's honestly quite fun. It's short enough, it's short enough and snappy enough that it can be quickly rolled out to play, and there'll just be this constant smile on your face through the entire thing as just the delightful characters repeatedly show up. Sure, the basic mode of the game is very underwhelming, but the rave party version provides an enthralling experience filled with difficult decisions. The question is, how does it fare against other games of its nature? Well, Railroad Inc. is another fun little box of a game in the same sort of style. It's a fun little puzzle experience, and while this probably has a bit more technical prowess to its puzzle, as well as the two mini expansions inside, Castle Party has that player interactivity that Railroad Inc. severely lacks, and also has a theme that most people might be more inclined to play with. Not everyone is as enthralled with trains as you might be. Meanwhile, ugh, Dinosaur Roaring, right? is, well, an incredible game. It's a lot more complex and has a lot more going on than Castle Party does. But also, well, it's, it's also a lot bigger. You see, Castle Party is a nice little, almost pocket-sized game, whilst Dinosaur Roaring Right is, well, a game for proper thinking, a proper day's worth of gaming. This is the sort of thing you sink your teeth into. Whilst Castle Party is a light, breezy game you can whip out if the day takes your fancy, maybe it's a nice little introductory game to a day of bigger thinking, which is perfectly important and a delightful experience. So that's Castle Party. It's a fun little theme-filled puzzle game that's punchy and quick, but with enough going on that'll make your brain itch, as well as make you really begin to wonder if you should actually ever host a party ever again. Mainly because you just don't have enough space to drown people anymore. Like, London real estate's really hard these days. Hello, and thank you for watching my video. Hopefully I've managed to hide my nipples the entire time. Otherwise, future me's got a lot of editing to do. Um, otherwise, I finally did it. It's been a while since I've done a board game review, so it's probably quite wonky and shonky. But importantly, aha, I can finally eat the rest of this bear. I've had it half eaten for almost a year, and now I can finally consume the rest of it. Victory. Otherwise, if you have any thoughts on this video, or on Castle Party, or on other board games you think I should play, let me know in the comment section down below. There is another one which I'm gonna review soon, I wonder what that could be, um, that I'm really excited to do, but otherwise, I just need to play more board games in my life, which I'm hopefully doing. Um, Otherwise, there is a video up here which will be about Final Fantasy XVI, not board game related, but it's a fun, long, in-depth video. And look, um, otherwise down here there will be something else. It might be Zelda or my last board game review. We'll see. Otherwise, you can click on my face to subscribe as per the norm. Um, and otherwise, thank you and goodbye.